Hey, dear Twin Flame community, welcome back. Sorry it's been so long since I recorded. I think it's been over a week now since I was on last. Um, the universe seems to have kept me busy and <laughs> distracted. Uh, lots going on, swim, uh, swim camps and stomach flus and sick kids and all sorts of things, making it hard to video. Lots lots in my mind that I wish I could say and lots of situations present that I wish I could share, but never the time to actually record anything. So I take that as the universe saying, take a step back and let things be. And now I'm here and I'm back and hopefully going to fulfill some of the things I said in the last video. Although, no jokes. <laughs> I know I said I was going to do some jokes, but I haven't been able to find any that make me laugh. They're all so bad. They're so bad. I gotta do some joke research or something. I don't know. It's crazy. They're so bad. <laughs> they make me groan. They don't make me laugh. So anyway, didn't have some fun. I've had, I've done some other things. I took, uh, took my youngest to the Royal Winter Fair. That was a blast. Um, we had a really good time and she remembered just how much she loved horses and then she decided that it was horrible and she was going to cry because she remembered how much she loved horses and that she missed them. So that was interesting. Um, all those emotions. Um, I went away for a day with my grandma, my aunt, and my uncle, or no, my grandma, my aunt, my mom, my cousin. Played with my cousin's new baby. That was fun kind of a draggy day because I wasn't I was really really exhausted didn't realize at the time I was coming down with a stomach flu but at the, in the moment I was tired but we did manage to go and see some interesting art in uh, Kitchener art walk thing so that was fun and then when I came home I was inspired to try to get back and do some more artwork and so my fun has been making a new painting so there's my new painting um, you can see me new painting. It's a deer and I'm a water girl so there's in that too but um yeah the deer is my um main spirit animal. I like to say he's my uh, supervisor. <laughs> he's my supervising spirit animal because I have a few that have been coming to help me with um journeys and life lessons and all sorts of things. Um but my dear is always there supervising, make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to. So that's good. Anyway, so that's how I've been having fun instead of finding any really silly jokes because apparently I don't find them very funny. I find them groan worthy. <laughs> yeah, so I also um, said that I was going to read another letter. And I went back through some of my letters and I felt they were very repetitive to the one that I'd already read um, on the video that I read my one letter to or my one letter out very repetitive they were written before that letter and they pretty much said the same thing and although there's some things in them that I would like to share reading the whole letter seemed redundant because I feel like I've got that message out um, I did find another letter I can't remember if I actually sent this to you I don't think I did I hope I didn't Maybe I did. Maybe I wrote it and hoped that you would just get it through the universe. I'm not sure. It's very convoluted because it's got like, pull this part out, move this part here. So if it sounds disconnected, it's because it's written in my journal and it's a mess. So um, <clears throat> anyway, I will read this one. It was written, just to give some context, it was written um, not after the, the very last time I reached out to my twin flame was to let him know about this channel and hope that I could release that need to contact him just having the knowledge that he had a way to hear my words if he chose to. So, but before that, I had a day where I needed to reach out to him because my kids were in turmoil and I didn't know what was going on and I wanted him to fix on his end whatever was tearing my family apart so um, that being said just to give you that context this is my letter so dear twin flame thank you for letting me know that you received my text 
I can appreciate that hearing from me isn't necessarily what you'd choose, so I'm very grateful for your acknowledgement. That being said, me writing this probably has you fearing you've opened a door to ongoing communication, but let me assure you that is not the case. I hope this to be my last attempt to bridge this gap until such time as you reach out to me. But I needed to write this time because I realize you are not in a position to talk to me, but I have things you need to hear. So that part is why this channel exists. Um, I know he's not ready to... I know... I know you're not ready to see me. I know that I represent a fear and confusion and uh, turmoil that you're just trying to avoid. Um, and I appreciate that in, all in your time. Like you, you do you and I, I respect your choices. It's your free will. Um, doesn't mean I like it, but I do respect it, and I'm trying really hard not to bridge or to um, push those boundaries. Uh, the times that I have, it's really been to. Well, the first one was what this letter's about was because my kids were in turmoil, and I needed I needed you to understand that it's not just your life that you're affecting in your choices that there's others who are connected um, and I just needed you to hear that um, and then the last time was because over and over and over again I'm trying to walk my path I'm trying to um, do do me I'm trying to do what I need to do and every time I meditated and journeyed and and go into counseling and Everybody says, you need to speak your truth, you need to speak your truth. And I kept saying, I can't, I can't, I can't, because um, he has boundaries. And i got to respect those boundaries, but I feel like I have so much to say. So, hence this channel is to allow me to speak my truth, hope that you hear it, <laughs> and um, be, be satisfied with that. Um... Yeah, to be satisfied with that. So I'm still doing what I need to do and still respecting your boundaries as best as I can. Um, so this, the email that this letter is talking about, it was a really hard email for me to hit send with because I knew I wasn't respecting your boundaries, but I, it wasn't for my sake, it was for my children's sake that I broke, broke that, broke that trust or broke that, um, ask from you um, and I felt bad I felt bad um, anyway so and I also understood that you don't want to talk because one of my requests in that was that if you or when you when you felt you could I would really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you um, and by your response. Now you did respond and I appreciate that you told me you got the message um, but your lack of interest in meeting with me um, pushed for this letter so that's what this is about. So um, <clears throat> so again I realize you're not in a position to talk to me but I have things I need you to hear hence this channel. I'd like to try to explain where I'm at and why after all this time I'm reaching out now and please know that all my words written are with love and with the purest intent. First off, I'd like to apologize for the tone of my text. I had no desire to anger you or upset you, and after rereading my words, it felt very harsh and accusatory, which was never my intention. I think the tone was due to the desperation and powerlessness I felt at this whole situation. <clears throat> and hence this letter. So, let me back up. First, you should know that my husband and I are no longer together. Our separation is harmonious and honestly the best thing that could have ever happened to me. Looking back, I wish we'd been smarter and done our date years ago, but hindsight's twenty twenty, and I recognize the lessons I needed to learn and the fact that if we had separated at that point in our lives, I would have missed some um, pivotal moments in my journey towards my highest good. So for all the bad, I now recognize the good and I am grateful. 
Dissolving my marriage was never something I felt I could do. It was one of my biggest fears. Um, sorry, it's all, it's all discombobulated in here. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to read it how I wrote it. And if it doesn't make sense, it's because I was brain dumping. Feel like, just understand. <laughs> um... Forcing myself to walk headlong into those fears, um, uh, the, forcing myself to move forward in separation, move towards divorce, um, facing all those fears, allowed me to get to the other side and see how much better life is. Because when I, this goes back to a conversation that you and I had a long time ago um, about why we stayed where we were, and or even kind of I think I wanted to write this down so I could explain to you why I said the things I said um, so why all those years did I stay in a marriage that I knew I shouldn't be in I felt trapped in the unknowns trapped in my self-doubt I felt I didn't deserve to be happy and that if I broke my words until death do us part I wouldn't be a bad person I felt it was my job to prove day after day that I wasn't disposable, that I would have no value, both figuratively and literally, if I left. I felt that I just wasn't strong, capable enough to do the work required by myself. But I was wrong. I was wrong. And that was a huge lesson. It was a huge lesson when I realized that everything I was afraid of and all the guilt and all the um, worthlessness, self, lack of self-worth um, was wrong. I didn't need to feel those things. I didn't do anything wrong. I was by, by not wanting to be married anymore, wasn't wrong. Um, everything for a reason and everything for a purpose, right? I believe my marriage was intended absolutely it needed to happen i needed my children i needed the life lessons that i learned from him um i needed that turmoil to teach me to see myself in a different light i needed um our meeting to teach me how to see myself in a different light i needed all of these um, life lessons and traumas and scenarios and situations and goods and bads to teach me who I truly am at my core. And I have to say, I think the biggest part of this letter was, I just want to say life is better when you push through those fears and value yourself. I think I've said this already before, but that's what it says. Oh boy, life is better. I can be me. I can be happy. I can follow my passions without judgment or, um, I don't even know what that was, or repercussions. Don't get me wrong, there's still shit that needs to be addressed. But I know my truth and face all my fears with knowledge that pushing through the uncomfortable crap will ultimately put me in a better place. Now, when I feel uneasiness or anxiety in my belly, I know, I know that I have to push through. After dealing with my husband, I found myself on a journey to find my place in the world, to heal the damaged parts of myself that allowed me to trap, that allowed me to trap myself in a life I wasn't happy in. Counselors weren't helping much because they couldn't help me understand my gut feelings, the feelings that had no explanation. They didn't understand the energy. Looking for someone, looking for someone to help me with that led me back to your sister. I wanted her I went to her for Reiki and for a voice of clarity. After a while, she suggested I should take level one course, um, the Reiki level one course, which I did almost a year ago now. Actually, it's been a year and a half now. <laughs> it was a year ago when I wrote this letter, um, which was life-changing. It was a life-changing experience I will never forget. There's nothing like finding a piece of yourself at the same time as you're experiencing a complete and total destruction of all the walls you've created to protect yourself and being left exposed, wounded, patched up, and vulnerable. 
It was life changing and was the beginning of a roller coaster ride of emotional breakthroughs, which have taken place all the months since. That's not an exaggeration, it's still going on, but I'm finding the calm way more than I'm on the roller coaster these days. It's, um, it's phenomenal. I faced my father, scariest thing I've ever done, gave him back his shit, came out riding a wave of euphoria. I confronted my husband, hired a lawyer, filed paperwork with the government, took care of all the things I never thought I could. Um, starting doing my artwork again. Um, started seeing over and over again the power of our thoughts. All the things that I used to be afraid of had disappeared because I was taking action, demanding better, and truly believing that I was worthy. In November, I went to Paris, but before I went, but before I went, I'm all over the place again. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Okay, I'll just read. Um, my, uh, I was faced to consider my value, my power. Um, at the same time, I also started having dreams of symbols. I asked your sister about them. She suggested it was time to do my second degree, second level Reiki, which I did in December, and yet again experienced a momental, m monumental shift. All my fears and anxieties around people dissipated. I felt like I knew everybody. So this was a crazy part. This was a crazy point. When I did my second level Reiki, I went from being afraid of talking. I went af I was af okay, before this, I was afraid to do anything because I'd have to talk to people. I was afraid to go to swim meets because I'd have to talk to people. I was afraid to go to the bank because I'd have to talk to somebody. I love the fact that you could do almost anything online. That's why going to the lawyers was scary. That's why doing when my wallet got stolen, I had to replace all the paperwork, all the ID. That's why it was scary was because I didn't like having to go and talk to people. And then I did my second degree level Reiki and it was like walking into a room where I knew everybody. It was crazy. It was crazy. Like everybody's like, yeah, hey, how's it going? It's like I know them all. I don't know them all. I recognize I don't know them all. But I think it's that I recognize the energy. I see who people are because I can feel who people are. Whereas I used to only have that with people I loved and people I cared about, and you, and yeah, people I love and people I care about, um, to different degrees. But then after I doing, did my second degree of Reiki, I could feel it with everybody. Now, I had to learn to get that under control because you can't go around feeling everybody all the time, but it lets you connect with people. It was awesome. Anyway. Um, Backing up a little bit, when I went to Paris, I was forced to face my connection with you. Um, as I tried my best to move forward, I felt a physical pull, a tether of sorts holding me back. The best I can describe it is like being in a barbed, is like a big barbed arrow stuck in my back attached to a thick metal cord leading back to you. No matter what I did, I couldn't get this arrow out. It was like a fish hook that ripped and tore if I tried to pull it. With help, I was able to loosen the cord so I had room to move, but the attachment remained. While in Paris, I hit a wall. I realized I was tired of everyone else telling me how to feel, who I should be mad at, who I should cut my life out, cut from my life, how I wasn't happy enough, how I wasn't mad enough, how I wasn't feeling my, how I was not facing my true feelings and burying things. When in fact, I knew exactly how I felt, and that I was good and content with those feelings, and I started telling everyone what I needed to hear from them. Sorry, and then I started telling people what I needed them to hear. Um, when I left Paris, having found my voice, myself, my value, my power, um, I, including you, I, I found, sorry, sorry, back up. So, I knew exactly how I felt and that I was good and content with those feelings, and I started telling everyone what I needed them to hear, including you. I wrote you a long letter. That's the one I wrote. That's the one I read before that I recorded. It took me a better part of a day. I needed to explain our last encounter and my truth. I still have it. Maybe I'll share it someday. I shared it. I hope you read it. Or I hope you watched it. That would be good. 
Anyway, I left Paris having found myself, my voice, my value, and my power. Um, then I came home and did my second degree Reiki. Um, I started seeing over and hour, over again the power of our thoughts. All the things that I used to be afraid of had disappeared because I was taking action, demanding better, and truly believing that I was worthy. I was taking my power back and the universe was rewarding me over and over and over again. I also recognized that I wanted to learn more, hence the shamanic classes with Bernie. With his guidance, I've learned how to connect better with spirit, how to ask the questions I'm unsure of, how to slowly and patiently unravel the life lessons of my past to find even more healing and understanding. Bernie encouraged me to follow the universe's signs to reach my highest good. And now that I am more aware, I realize I... I realize that I've received unexplainable signs and messages all the time. The problem, problems I have with signs and messages are the following. A. Everything comes as a riddle. It's not cool. Um, B. My interpretation um, is my asking myself if my interpretation is led by truth or with ego. Two or three. How, how do I follow the path I'm being shown while still respecting other people's wants. Hence, needing to talk to you, um, but you not wanting me to have contact. There was a big question. That was a big stumbling point for me. And how can I be sure that my intentions are pure? Which brings me to the truth of this letter. For years, I didn't understand the connection I felt to you. I didn't understand the connection between our children. I couldn't explain why our dreams were intertwined or why I felt like a part of ourselves was torn away when our families went our separate ways. I couldn't explain to Sadie why she knows when your boy is distressed or why my son has headaches. I personally felt confused and ashamed that I was being um, obsessive and stalkerish because I was desperate to have that connection back where it was tangible and real. After moving through a fair amount of this enlightenment process, I realized one of the fears that I needed to face is this relationship connection between you and I and, the, and in turn our kids. However, I was held trapped, bound to memory of you furiously telling me to never contact you, that I was drama, that I had used you, that I wasn't worth the trouble, and I was frozen with fear. But the universe wasn't going to let me off so easily. I started getting strange emails from people and groups that I never heard of. Soul Transparency, Twin Flames 1111, Stacy C. Saunders. I've been seeing 1111 for years and all of a sudden I was, given, I was given contacts. Soulmates, Twin Flames, being guided by angels. Everything I was reading was highlighting our connection. It was unnerving how they could describe exactly my experience and feelings when I had been in your presence. They gave explanations for feeling things from great distances. They explained about Akashic records, binding soul contracts, the difference between soulmates and twin flames, etc. And through this whole process of learning, more and more situations with my daughter, um, were occurring. Um, sorry, there's a whole bunch of crossed out, I'm not sure. And also that more and more situations with us had no explanation. Um, twin flames cannot find each other without dedication from each party to their own life path and healing. By its own nature, it is an elevated consciousness and m magical connection. I'm not sure what that part's for. It's just stuck in randomly. Each time I'd read something new, the first thing I think is, I wish my twin flame could read this. Anyway, long story short, we can't stop thinking about you. You're back full force in my dreams. My daughter cries about your son all the time. And if she's not upset, she's picking out a card she wants to give him for his birthday or drawing pictures of their spirit animal. Okay, on that note, I apologize profusely for the whole birthday card situation. That had nothing to do with me. And I tried my best to dissuade that in every possible way. I refused to purchase said birthday card. I refused to uh, provide an address for said birthday card. I refused to mail said birthday card. 
All of that was done by my daughter. She took it upon herself to talk to your sister. She spent her money on it. And as far as I knew, there was nothing in it that, I mean, I don't even know. I didn't read it, so I don't even know what she wrote in it. Um, but I asked specifically that nothing be written in it that could be misconstrued or um, I, I know, I know it caused great explosions and I'm sorry that you were put in that position, but I take no responsibility for it because I did everything in my power to dissuade it and yeah, yeah, anyway. It was a birthday card from her. That's all it was. There was no manipulation intended. It was just she saw that card and she had, she, he needed to have it in her opinion. He needed that card. He needed the message on it. And she, ne she needed to be, she needed to be the one to give it to him. So for all the fallout, I'm sorry, but I can only control so much. And that one, that one was out of my hands. Okay, so what am I hoping with this letter will accomplish? Well, I hope maybe you can learn from the journey I've already taken and to hear me when I say it's much better on the other side of fear. I always go back to that. It's hot better on the other side of fear. Go through, push through. Yeah. Yeah. Another letter. I feel like I repeat myself so much. You're not hearing. So, while looking for that letter, I found a couple dreams that I've had over the past that I've written down. Maybe I'll share a couple of those with you in the future. Um, it explains some of my confusion and what's happening in our world. <laughs> it's so hard. When you learn about shamanic journeying and you learn about Reiki and you learn about energies and you learn about all this stuff, it's really hard to go back to normal thinking on about what dreams actually are. So when you have a dream and people are in them, you can't help but analyze and decide, okay, is this journey, am I supposed to learn something? Did something happen? Am I, is there a message in this? Is, is, is my twin flame sending me a message? Is his higher self sending me a message? What is the message I need from this? It's very, it's very uh, exhausting. It's exhausting. <laughs> anyway, that's another letter. You can see the repetitiveness. Walk through the fear. Take care of yourself. You're worthy. Find your self-worth. Find your voice. Find your power. Take back your power. You don't owe anybody anything. You don't owe me anything. You don't owe your karmic anything. You don't owe your children anything. You just... The only thing you owe to the universe as a whole, which is all the people and all the things, because it's all one big ball of energy is your truth truth of who you are how you feel and owning that because when you walk in that all things start to align and you deserve that because you're awesome okay i think that's it happy thursday and i hope uh hope this video finds you well dear twin flame you are loved and you are missed